Ready for the word? Hey, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Whenever you're watching this video, my name is Mark Holiday, and my goal today is to bring you an encouraging word that's going to equip and empower you for effective living. You know, I was thinking the other day, I was thinking back in the early days of my Christian life, even, even now, every now and then I'll see a man or woman of God that's speaking with such boldness, with such authority. And, and I used to ask this question, why is it they can speak with such confidence? Why is it they can stand up with an assurity and say, God is going to do such and such, or God said this, or God said that? Well, it went back to the Bible. I just simply come to find out they believe what God has said. And you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that validates what I saw in these men and women of God. Let's read it real fast. And we're going to build a quick encouraging word. Turn to first John, the fifth chapter and the 14th verse. Look what it says. It says, this is the confidence that we have in him who is him, God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hear us. And if we know he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know we have the petitions desired of him. Let me read that again. In verse 14, it says, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, what's God will? His will is his word. It says he hear us. And if we know he hear us, whatever we ask, we know we have the petitions we desired of him. Now, that's a powerful statement there. Now, as I go back and I look at these men and women of God, and whenever I see a man or woman of God stand teaching, preaching, and sharing the word of God with a conviction and with passion. I know why they're sharing with such confidence. They found it in the word of God. Do you know the word of God is nothing but a book of promises? It's a promise of what God said he would do. This is why Satan, even in the garden of Eden, his first mission was to get Adam and Eve to doubt what God has said. If you go back and read in that second chapter in which he tempted them, he kept saying, right, matter of fact, the third chapter, he said, did God really say, or even look in the passage of scripture when Jesus was tempted on the Mount of Transfiguration, he kept saying, if, if God said, or if you be, he tried to get Jesus to doubt who he was. Satan's primary mission is to get the believer to trust or distrust what God has said about his word. However, if you can get yourself to believe what God has said, you will begin to work, walk in this confidence. You know, God took this into, into consideration that you cannot see him feel him or any of those such things. But if you got a person's word, a real man's word, a man will do what he said he's going to do. So the Bible says, God said, I sent my word to do what? In one passage, it said to heal them. And even when people came to Jesus and wanted him to come heal a family member, they said, just say in a word and I know my daughter will be healed. Jesus, you don't even have to come. Just let me get your word. And Jesus will always respond, great is thy faith, great is thy confidence. So here's what I want to encourage you, believer. I want you to sit down and I want you to begin to go through the word of God and begin to examine it and see what God has to say in any area of your life in which you're having a challenge, a struggle, uh, a tribulation or a trial. If it's in the area of healing, I want you to go back to the scripture and see what God has to say about healing. If it's about your attitude, if it's about your finances, if it's about your marriage, if it's about your manhood, your womanhood, your calling your life, whatever it may be, there's a scripture in the Bible for it. And once you get that scripture and you begin to do what Joshua did in the first chapter in the eighth verse, God told him because Joshua is facing a big dilemma. Just let me give you the side of uh, the side story of what happened. Moses had just died and he had approximately one million people following him out of Egypt. They just came out of bondage and now he's died. And Joshua now is the second in control or second in command. I can only imagine Joshua was a little nervous because he had big shoes to fill. God spoke to him and gave him a word. He said, listen, Joshua, this book of the law or the word of God, don't let it depart out of your mouth. He said, I want you to meditate in it day and night. That means continuously. 
Then he said, observe to do all that is written according therein. And when you do that, he said, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Notice Joshua's success. It was really based on what he did. He said, take the word of God. Spend some time thinking about it, meditating on it, dissecting it, defining it, seeing what it has to say. He said, think about it day and night. And then the second part, I want you observe to do. Once you think about it, meditate on it, find out what he says, apply it to your life. Once you do that, the third thing he said, you're going to make your way prosperous and you're going to have good success. And once you start having success with God and see God open doors for you and start doing some things, there's a confidence and the boldness is going to rise up in you. I remember a passage of scriptures when the when the Jewish leaders sent guards to arrest Jesus. They found Jesus teaching in the synagogue. And when they got there, they just stood there and began to listen. Then the Jewish leaders arrived and they said, how come you haven't arrested them? You know what the guard's response was? Never have we ever heard a man speak like this before. What were they doing? They was arrested by the authority and the boldness of Jesus. And when you get the word of God on your lips and you begin to meditate on it, begin to think about it and begin to act on it, there's a confidence that's going to rise up in you. Why? You know you're doing the will of God and you know you're acting in the word of God. And so you have no reason to believe you're going to fail. So to end this passage of scripture, let's go back to first John, the fifth chapter in the 14th verse. Look what he said. He said, this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, what do we say his will is? His will is his word. It says he's going to hear us. So that means when you pray, God is listening. And if we know he hear us, Whatever we ask, we know we have the petitions or the prayer or the request that we have desired of him. Listen, believer, I want you to get into the word of God and I want you to be like the man in Matthew, the seventh chapter in the 24th verse. God called him a wise man that he began to build his house on the word of God. And when the rains descended, when the floods came and it started beating upon his house, which was his life, the scripture says he could not fall. Why? His house was built upon a rock. Let me encourage you with this. Many times it feels like you're going to fail. And that's what the enemy wants you to think. He's going to be whispering in your ear. Oh, it's not going to happen. Oh, you know, your neighbor died of this. Your neighbor died of that also. Or oh, another friend of yours tried that. But how do you know what they were believing? How do you know what they were standing on? All you can do is believe for yourself. And when you begin to believe for yourself and you begin to stand on what God says and you do what Joshua did, meditate in the word day and night, observe to do all that is written according therein. God says you're going to make your way prosperous and you're going to have good success. We're going to stop there. I'm so glad you tuned in. I want you to stay tuned for another encouraging word that's going to equip and empower you for effective living. All right, we'll talk later.